In this video, I'm testing three different AI video tools to see if they can fully replace 3D animation software. Each test will be more difficult than the last. Let's see if AI is up for the challenge. Let's start with Mid Journey. Mid Journey is kind of like the new kid on the block. A lot of people are trying it out and seeing what it can do. So let's see if it can handle like actual product animations. By the way, the product that I chose is this Soundcore Bluetooth speaker. I think it's got a good balance of details that the AI will need to make sure it gets right. I'm gonna feed this to Mid Journey and see if it can kind of replicate all these details. All right, Mid Journey, you fail at accuracy, but that's okay. Let's go to ChatGPT and see if it can give us some starting images. The first one came out pretty good, other than some of the buttons not being accurate. If this was an actual client project, I could probably Photoshop in the correct buttons for this. So I'm going to bring in a starting frame into Mid Journey, which is the one we got from ChatGPT. And let's say the speaker slowly rotates. I guess let's just see if that works. Okay, they didn't turn out bad actually. I mean, this one, it kind of like hallucinated a second loop. It also gave this one a headphone jack. But this one's not bad, we could probably use it. In the next shot, I want to have a finger come down and press one of these buttons. So again, let's bring that starting frame into Mid Journey, and we'll just see what that does. So for whatever reason, it just keeps the fingers on screen for so long. So I'm gonna try another prompt. What about finger taps button and then goes back off screen? Look at it just like hallucinating random fingers. Like it's just guessing like, this is probably what a hand looks like. Finger taps button quickly and then goes back off screen. I mean, this one's not bad, but it just kind of stays on for too long. I feel like this one is my favorite so far. It still stays on screen too long, but I can probably cut out some of the in-between frames here. For the last shot in this video, I want to have the music coming out of the speaker. So I kind of want to have like a music visualization. And I feel like None of these really look good. Once I saw these, I thought it would be nicer if the speaker kind of bounced up and down with the beat of the music. And it was kind of struggling with that. You can see it doesn't really know what I'm trying to tell it to do. I feel like this one is good enough just for our purposes today, but I'm not sure if I would feel confident giving this one to a client. So let's cut them together in Premiere real quick and just see what we have. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan. I don't know if it's just because I'm a professional 3D artist myself, but these just feel so clunky and weird. It was a fairly quick process if you're just looking for speed. I didn't necessarily feel like I had the most creative control, it was more just like pulling a slot machine. I felt like it wasn't very good at accurately showing the whole product whenever it rotated more than maybe 70 degrees, it sort of generated a second strap that didn't exist. Now there used to be only physically shot product videos and then 3D animation came along and introduced new use cases. Like now we can go into the product and explode it in ways that we couldn't have done with physical photo shoots. And maybe AI is just another generation of that kind of thing where there will be specific use cases. Like maybe you only need to see the product video from this one angle and you just need a super complex forest in the background really fast. I could see AI being used for that kind of stuff more and more often. All right, let's try Kling AI. The main reason I wanna try out Kling AI is because they have a feature that lets you input motion from one video and use that for a second video. So I thought it would be cool if I could bring in a simple animation from Blender and have AI do all the product modeling, lighting, texturing, and things like that. So here's the animation I whipped up in Blender. I gave each side of this cube a different color to hopefully help with AI knowing that these are different sides. So I'm gonna to go to multi elements and I'm gonna upload a video. So here's my video and I just select the subject. I'm gonna select it in a couple parts to make sure it tracks well. And now let's click preview full selected area. Nice, it tracked our object pretty good. This is the image I'm gonna give it as a reference. It's just like a random handheld console I saw on Amazon. I thought this would be a fun product to feed it. I'm gonna just drag that in here. Swap cube from video for the handheld console in image. 
then I'm gonna click generate. So here's what it came up with. It kind of has difficulty coming up with a backside, and I guess that's my fault for not really giving it a back. I'm not sure if I can give it multiple references though. I think I can only give it one here. For my second attempt, instead of giving it a super complex animation, I am gonna feed it this one, where it doesn't even really rotate, it just kind of rises up and moves a little bit. So let's put that in there. Okay, it actually didn't turn out bad. Now again, it, it made it rotate the full 360 for some reason. For fun, let's try one more animation. I spun this up in Blender and I'm gonna give it to Kling and we'll see what it does. Okay, I mean, it's not usable really for any professional work, but it's definitely interesting to see where the technology is at and where it could be at in a couple of years. So I'm gonna go ahead and fail Kling AI as well. It was a fun toy to play around with, but uh, I just felt like it didn't really accurately represent the product at all, which is pretty important for product animation. But I do feel like this concept of using AI as a render engine is promising, and there are a few different groups of people working on it, where basically within Blender, you've got your simple shapes, and then you have a prompt that says what the scene should be, and then it's, it should follow you know, the basic animation of your shapes, while doing all the complex development of the lighting and modeling and textures and stuff like that. I've seen some architectural artists using AI as like a final pass over their renders to bring their basic 3D characters over the uncanny valley and just making them look more realistic. Let's try one more AI video tool. This one is Google's VO3. It's arguably the most impressive. You've probably seen fake videos circulating social media of people talking to the camera that's completely AI generated. That is usually coming from VO3. So I had Midjourney generate these three images, and then I used ChatGPT to swap out the main can or drink with a ChatGPT drink. Then with those three images, I put them into VO3 as starting frames. So I just gave it this image and I said, soda can floats above the pool water with other sliced fruits and it gave me this. When the can rotates, it keeps the uh, logo, which isn't perfect, but if we only use like a portion of this video, it'll work. Let me generate the other two videos and I'll show you how it turned out. I feel like this is the highest quality product video I've been able to produce so far. Still not perfect, but amazing what's possible in under two hours. I guess I did give it a fairly simple product. Probably it couldn't handle maybe a complex speaker or headphones or something like that. I'll have to play around with it a little bit more. I'm definitely impressed with VO3 though. So did AI win this battle versus 3D animation? It's crazy to think about how far it could be within a few months to a few years, depending on if it keeps growing at the same rate. Especially if you only make still product renders, I do think you need to be playing around with AI a lot more just to keep up with the pace of what other people can do with it. But I am still confident in saying that I don't think 3D animation will go anywhere. Especially in the broad sense of the word 3D, I mean, 3D includes so many things like game development, virtual reality and augmented reality, and 3D printing, just to name a few. And even in the product video niche that this video was about, AI just simply won't ever give you as much control as 3D animation does. So my advice to 3D artists is just keep playing around with these tools, you know, making our storyboards and simple animatics with AI generated stuff just to have something drafted up, and then we can improve off of those ideas from there too. I don't think AI will ever take your job as a 3D artist, but if you refuse to play around with these tools and learn about it, then it's possible another 3D artist that is familiar with these tools could. I would also say to just continue developing the muscle in your brain of coming up with interesting ideas and executing on them. Again, if you're a 3D product animator and all of your videos are just your product floating up and then floating back down, realistically, AI I could probably replace that pretty soon. So I think people with better ideas and better execution will just continue to stand out above other people just like they always have. And honestly, that's what clients want from you anyways. They want you to come up with ideas that actually get people to stop scrolling and turn their head and be interested in what their product is about. I think that's it for this video. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe. I'm trying to get to 5k subscribers by next month. Comment below what your thoughts are on AI. Do you think I gave a fair assessment? Do you think I missed anything important? I do plan on coming out with more actual Blender tutorials soon, so stay subscribed for that, and thanks for watching.